For the CircuitPython Parsec today, I want to talk about reading data from USB game pads inside of CircuitPython. Here what I have is one of our Feather RP2040 USB host feathers. So you can see it's got two USB ports on it. One is USB-C for giving it either just power or data when you're pro programming it or putting assets on it. And then it has a USB-A port to host things like mice and keyboards and in this case a gamepad. So this is sort of a generic uh, gamepad from Amazon. I think two of them for $14 or something like that. doesn't even really have a brand name. It's the model GP100. Uh, this is one that I was using with the Pico 8 project. So generic gamepad, but pretty much any USB gamepad. If we want to get some data off of it, if we want to find out what buttons are being pressed, we can do that right here in CircuitPython. So if you take a look at my REPL here, I'm just going to restart this and you'll see the first thing that happens is we're scanning the USB host port and we see a product ID, vendor ID, manufacturer name, they didn't fill that out. Uh, what's the product? It's a USB gamepad and then the interfaces that it's coming in over. So this is uh, set as a USB gamepad. And then we have the data stream, the message that's coming from it when something changes. So initially we just get one and then it's waiting in this case for something to change. So if I press, let's say, down button, up button, down button, you can kind of watch. There's actually some repetitions of, of the, the data here, some redundant stuff. But if you watch the uh, first and second line of the code there, it's uh, 7F00 or 7F, uh, 7F. So as I press those buttons, we're getting different buttons that are being pressed. So uh, this is pretty useful on its own just to see if things are working. And the way this code works, this is actually in, I'm going to show you in a minute, the learn guide that has code from Foamy Guy on detecting USB game pads and reading their data specifically. Uh, the way this works is it's using USB core and the Adafruit USB host descriptors library. Now, I won't go into the bulk of the code because it's mostly just asking for the message that comes from a device that's been found and then printing that. However, I will show you a more advanced example of taking that and using it to name the buttons so that we can reuse them in the code. So uh, if we take a look at the game configurator.py, and I'll post this in uh, my learn guide or my parsec repo and paste this into here. Uh, this is going to either try to load up an existing map. I already created a little map file for myself called snesbuttonmap.py. Uh, if it doesn't find that, it'll set about having you create that by configuring it. But this one's already configured. So now you can see instead of just that stream of data, I'm getting any buttons being pressed by name. So A, B, Y, X, all showing up at once there, or individually, left, right, up, down, start, select, right shoulder, left shoulder. All this is, is a mapping of that message that we got before, uh, and then giving it some nice names to use. You can then, of course, use this as a launching point to actually do things inside of your code, play a game, move LEDs around, change colors, so on. Uh, once you do that, you've got yourself a really nice, neat, inexpensive, uh, nice form factor set of a whole bunch of buttons. And this can be extended to other types of game controllers as well. So this is the configuration file. So this is the message and the bit that gets set for each of those different combinations after we've sort of scraped that data by learning by example. Uh, and then back inside of here, we can use those to just print out a nice, neat name. All right, and so that is how you can use the USB core and USB host descriptors with a host feather and a USB game controller to read your gamepad button presses. And that is your CircuitPython Parsec.